In this video, we're going to apply some camera shake using Cinemachine. This is a very simple effect that you can add to your game to make it feel a lot better. Adding it to your Cinemachine virtual cameras is very easy. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so let's add some nice and simple camera shake. Now, normally I handle my cameras with a custom script, but I've been using Cinemachine more and more since it's so useful. But when I went looking into how to apply camera shake to Cinemachine, I couldn't find much information on it. So if you're facing this issue, then hopefully this video will help since it really is very simple. Okay, so here's my scene. I have my simple player character. I can move around and shoot. And right now there's no camera shake, so it makes the shooting feel very weak. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. All right, so let's edit. Now here in the editor, everything is set up using Cinemachine. Now, if you're not familiar with Cinemachine, then check the link in the description where I covered a video on how to get started. Here, the main camera has the Cinemachine brain and down here is the virtual camera. So it is simply set up just to follow this player character. It's a very basic setup. And now the key for adding screen shake is very simple. Down here we have a field for the noise. So change it from none to a basic multi-channel Perlin. And now we can see that we need a noise profile. Now there are already some pre-made presets. So for example, let's use the 6D shake. And now here we can play around with these values. So here with the game running, we can see the noise in action. Now here by modifying the frequency, we can adjust how often the camera shakes. And by modifying the amplitude, we can adjust how much it actually shakes. So as we increase, then each shake moves the camera much further. So in this case, what we're going to do is set the frequency to a certain value. And then all we need is a script that sets the amplitude to a certain amount and then slowly decreases it back down to zero. All right, so let's make that script. Here, let's create a new C Sharp script. Call this our Sin Machine Shake. And let's drag the script onto our virtual camera game object. Okay. Now in here, first we need to grab our virtual camera. So let's get it on our awake. Up here, we need to add using Sin Machine. Then we can do a get component of our Sin Machine virtual camera. All right, we have a field for our camera. Now let's make a function to shake it. Here, we're going to receive a float for the intensity of the shake and also a float for the timer. So we're going to shake the camera using this intensity for this low. And now we access our Sin Machine virtual camera in order to set the amplitude So we go into our Sin Machine virtual camera. We get the Sin Machine component of type of our basic multi-channel Perlin. And then we modify the amplitude gain and we set it to that intensity. All right, so this will make the camera shake. And now here we have two methods that we can use for handling the time. One approach is to leave the amplitude at this amount. And after this amount of time, we drop it to zero or we can slowly decrease this over time. Let's first try out with the simple timer. So let's store it in a field. And here we set it, okay. Then we have our private void update where we're going to count down the shake timer. All right, so if we have a shake timer, then we count it down by time dot dot time. And then if it's under zero, then once again, we grab our multi-channel Perlin and we set the amplitude back to zero. Okay, so now all we need to do is to call this script from somewhere. Now in here I have my player script and here is where I'm handling the shooting. So it's just doing a bullet recast and spawning some effects. So it's in here that we want to shake our camera. Now back in our Sin Machine Shake, we want this to be very easy to use. So in order to do that, let's make a static instance. So we have our static instance that we set on our awake. 
So now back in the player, here we can access our scene machine shake, access the instance and call our shake camera function. Now let's give it some intensity and some time. All right, that should do it, let's test. Okay, so here I am and shoot. And yep, there you go, it did indeed shake. Now when I shoot, it's shaking way too much, but yep, there you go, we have our camera shake using Cinemachine. So here it is with a more manageable intensity. All right, awesome. So this is our first method. It simply starts and stops shaking after a while. Now let's implement the second slow drop method. So here on our update, instead of counting down the timer and then setting it to zero, what we need to use is our math.lerp. So this interpolates a value between A and B over T. So we need our starting intensity. So we have the starting intensity and we're going to want to alert that starting from the starting intensity, going towards zero and over time, which will be our time. So we store the shake timer total, and as the shake timer goes down, then this will essentially start from one and go down to zero. All right, so we just apply this alert. Okay, so just like this, let's test. Okay, here we are and shoot, and yep, there you go. Now it's a bit more subtle. So this one goes down a bit more smoothly than the other approach. Now, which one you use well depends on what design you're going for. One is snappier and one is smoother. This method, for example, would be better if you had some sort of explosion. So as I shoot, if there you go, shakes a lot and then slowly goes back down to zero. So again, really depends on the usage. All right, so here it is, a very simple effect, which now you know how to apply when using Sin Machine. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unity codemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.